sorry, she can take it forward from you. So today we're just going to discuss Lambda and stream and then uh, part one of this. And then you're going to discuss the comparable picture. So guys, you can tell me that what is Lambda expression as per you? What do you, your understanding, how you're going to be defining Lambda expression? Hello, sir. What is lambda expression? Sir, uh, lamb. Sir, give me a second. Uh, hello, sir. So, lambda expression, sir, uh, uh, basically has one functional interface. And in that lambda expression, we provide the implementation uh, of that interface, uh, which we want to provide. Basically, we do not need uh, means uh, to write a lot of code for that. Uh, uh, if we define that uh, lambda expression, uh, it means that expression inside that uh, uh, inside that uh, function, then we do not need to uh, write it again and again. Okay. Let's see what is lambda expression. So we can say that it is just an anonymous function, right? So what constitute a particular function is um, it is a stand without a class so we don't need to write an anonymous class for this okay. and just like any function what a function consists of function consists of four things right one is its return type then the function argument list then the body of the function and the function name right so now for the lambda function, it only represents two things. One is the parameter list and one is the body of the function. Okay. The, uh, they are anonymous, so there is no name. And also the return type is actually inferred from the body of the expression that particular lambda function to consist. Yeah, it is correct. We can say the lambda function are kind of uh, single abstract represent a single abstract method interfaces or their representation of functional interface so first example of lambda function is what um, this is our lambda function right so normally what we write generally uh, we write um, a thread right and if we want to start a thread what we need to write we need to implement a runnable interface and provide a kind of anonymous uh, implementation of that. And then when the start method is called, the run block is basically executed. So we can you know, uh, replace that particular code using simple thread method. And within the thread, we can create an anonymous function. Here the run method as doesn't create any kind of argument right we can say that it doesn't require any argument so we can put single parenthesis without any argument and then we put arrow symbol and then we put the body of that particular lambda function okay so even if the lambda function is integrated uh, introduced there it is like a backward compatible so what do you mean by that is If you can create a library, that particular code is uh, particularly usable with any kind of API that you have from the Java 7 in your code base. Like for example, thread is uh, there. And you can also use the uh, existing codes uh, without much change. You can pass this anonymous function there. Okay. And when you have this particular parameters, it's basically iterate of the type parameters and interference of that particular type from the method body. So that being the lambda function, okay? So let's simply see the lambda function example like we have seen out here. So normally this is uh, what this code is actually equivalent of. 
So here previously what we have, we had the runnable method that we have, correct? And inside that we have a run method. Instead of that, what you can do, we can simply replace that with a number function because this method doesn't take anything. So we can simply put this and then we put the body of the first part. Okay. Okay. Another example will be we have like a list of values, right? Now, also, we have another concept which is known as. Uh, so lambda expression we can use and we can you know pass this annual function as a argument to other methods also but we mostly use uh, anonymous function with a, our string okay now this is like basic example we know the list of values that you can see right and from the list of values, we can you know call the stream, which is like an inter and iteration, and then we convert this integer to a string. So we could have written this particular numbers like this numbers stream. Then we can say map, and then here we can say this is like a single value, right? That's a value, and then we have like a string dot value of value, right? And then for each, again, we want to write another lambda value. And here you can put system dot out integer in, here is the value. This code actually works. And um, it basically print out all the values that are there. It converts them the integer value to the strings, right? So we print it out. Whatever you know, number of elements that you have is basically print them out. That you can see, and also you can see the in third method. Okay, so now this is okay, but instead of you know, now comes that what is the difference between this particular line and also this line? So if we execute both of them together, we'll find them they are being representing or evaluating same set of you know outcome. We can write so they are basically equivalent to each other. Both of them are, you know, converting the numbers into a string, and then for each, they are basically printing it up. They're basically identical outcome. They just printed the value that is there. So, can you guys tell me what is this syntax known as or this syntax, which places we are using double colon? It is there. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, that is a uh, means a reference. Uh, what is it? Method reference, right? Method reference, yes. Okay. So what is method reference actually? When you can use a method reference? Method reference can be only used when the parameter, right? The lambda parameter that we are seeing is basically passed through another set of and functions right pass to another function so just like our example we are writing value then our arrow symbol then we are just string then string value of and then we are passing the value so there is we are not doing any other operation right so only in that particular case we can use method reference if you are say you know you wanted to you know using map and you wanted to you know, convert that into a double, then you cannot 
or you are you know incrementing that or decrementing that with certain numbers right you cannot you know convert that into values right and the method reference you can refer from the lambda expression both for the instance method as well as for the static method so like for our example here string dot string double colon uh, value of this is known as basically a static method reference and instead of the system dot out on println println is basically instance method of your out object which is basically output stream on the system okay so that we can do and also this is uh, true when you are using this for a single parameter or when you're using two parameters as well in the your lambda function expression so both cores are identical but it makes a lot of sense you know to you know replace them with a method uh, you know method difference because it becomes much more you know easily readable okay this we can see this is like a instance this is like an instance variable of out, which is basically nothing but uh, your object print stream, right? And then you have the static method of the string class that you can also do. Now, if you can, you know, put your cursor out there, you can find that your ID also going to be saying that replace this lambda with a method. So you can also, your ID is also can, you know, indicating that where you can you know, change this to method reference instead of just putting out the lambda expression so that was what if previously we have we can easily replace that with the method reference that being one now other example we have is that um, is that this this particular expression so what is this expression is about here we are using the reduce function. So what is a reduce function has a two overridden version where it basically operates on the stream of values. And when it's operated on the stream of values, it takes uh, two argument, right? And we can, you know, initialize with the initial value zero, then we can take two argument, and then we are basically doing the sum operation, correct? So then we can easily, can into the sum operation and we can get the outcome of that particular sum that you can see of the list of values that we have up here. Now in this particular lambda function, right, uh, we need to also print it out. So let's say put int number and then we can you know print it out. And what is the benefit apart from, you know, writing your Lambda functions is that with the method reference, it becomes much more, you know, easier to understand, right? So now this Lambda function, when you have a multiple values, you just put in the parenthesis and you can, you know, just simply give a comma, right? Now here, what is the common part? The common part is the total and the value. This is the common part both in the argument section and also into the function that you are calling, right? So this same reducer function, what you can do, you can simply change the reducer function to just integer sum. It will be, you know, printing out the same values again. That is one, three, two. So that means here you can also use the static method reference, right? It is not that you are just have like a single, um, argument or multiple argument as long as your arguments that you have in a lambda function doesn't does anything apart from passing that into another function you can you know reference that particular function as a method reference in your code base
another third example. Here we are uh, able to find out what is the sum of the event function, even numbers, right? And also, what we're going to do, we're going to be, you know, duplicate, uh, you know, incrementing them by two. So here again, we have the lambda function, but can we, you know, replace this two expression or two lambda function using any method reference? We cannot. Okay, because here we are, you know, written the particular lambda functions. And then here it is not a simple pass through. Here we are not calling any particular functions where we are just passing the particular parameter as it is. So in this case, we cannot use the method reference. We only can be used the lambda expression itself. And here we have replaced the dot sum the reduce uh, so like a specialized version dot sum so instead of writing reduce then zero then integer sum we can directly you know call the sum similarly we have max mean average count etc so i hope it is clear right where which cases we can use the method reference and which cases we cannot use the method reference any questions you have so far No, oh, sir. Okay. So it is clear to you guys, right, Chindima? Yes, sir. Either? Okay, fine. Mostly we have seen the, the method reference and, uh, you know, what is lambda expression. So it is clear to you. Now, next is about streams. Okay. So what are streams? Streams are, again, the are basically nothing but multiple functions they are grouped together okay and they are basically different abstractions abstractions that are there okay so let us see some example of stream and try to understand so also when you use stream right so now what you can do we can write two ways of code we can write a normal set of code and we can write uh, also team stream based code right so let's take up the first example okay. what this function is currently doing uh, what we are trying to do we have a list of numbers okay what are you going to do we're going to do um, take even numbers from the list and do the and double the numbers numbers by two and put in another list. Now the question is if we wanted to Do it in normally without using the lambda. What you need to do, so we're going to be starting with something like that. So first of all, we're going to be creating a list, okay? And then we're going to put this as a say uh, double and convert into double the number, okay? And do double the number by two, okay? So we're going to converting this uh, double it, but we are also converting into double. So I'm going to take a list of double, okay? Let's say even double, and then I say list of. Okay. I can create empty list of this, okay. and if I just wanted to do it normally with uh, Java P Java eight, what I'm going to do? I go to first going to take the numbers from the numbers. Then what I have to do? I have to put if correct. The number need to be even number, so I'm going to mod by two is equal to is equal to zero. Okay. If the number is thin, what I'm going to do? I have to 
increment the number by two, right? Okay, and then I want to add to the uh, my previous collection, right? That is given over. Then I'm going to say add. What I have to do? Number into two point zero zero. So that particular code I have to write on my own. So, but this code is also works, correct? There's no problem with that. But what is the equivalent of the double of numbers, right? Double of events. If I just want to go system maintenance. Similarly, I can you know put. And execute them both together. Okay. Sorry, unsupported exception is an immutable connection, right? So just normally, you know, initialize this as a new array list. This job is basically immutable, so we cannot add anything to that. So we get the same kind of output, right? Both of the lists are identical. But my question to you guys is that you see the two kind of code, right? Uh, one is without the lambda, right? Without lambda and string. And another is basically with the stream. So which of them are actually, you know, easier to use? Okay. So let's put this as a stream. Okay. In this stream, what you can do, uh, so if we need to write this, what we normally do, we start with the number of stream. So that represents your for loop or the iterator, right? Then we have to check whether that conditions are fulfilled, then we are only going to be performing the operation. That is your filter. So what is filter does? It basically checks whether that particular number that we have, it will let that particular from the stream of number, it's filtered out those numbers which are matching the condition or the predicate. Okay. So here I can define the predicate like this. Or I can use a method reference provided I'm passing this in calling a particular method because it's like a pass through, so I can use a method reference. So I have created is even, and I put this the number. So number is equal to when mod two, then this is like an even number. So when the filter is actually going through, what is basically it does, it's filtering out only the events of, of the objects out from the stream, which are matching this condition. Then come the map or your transformation. So when you have started this, it's like a stream of integer. When you are converting into, it's become a stream of double. So how we are transforming that? We are saying map, we are saying value, and then we have value into two points, right? So now then it becomes a double. And then after that, we use a terminal operator that is a collector. So we have say collector to this and that converts this. So here obviously whatever code I have written out here is much more easier to understand, much more easier to readability than what you, you have. Because when you're going to come and read this line, then you say what is event double, then you have to go up. Then again, you come back and then you say number, then you have to go out here, what is the number is. That way how you need to interpret that particular imperative style of coding. When you use the lambda or more or less functional test style of coding, what you actually do is you are composition of multiple functions. What function you are composing of? Apart from stream of number, you are composing filter, you are composing map, and after that you are collecting those values. So this is much more easier compared to whatever you know imperative style of coding we are doing now.
that one now also in the numbers what you find is uh, so now see the next example so that's our first example that we're seeing that what is the stream does is basically lambda is anonymous function so it allows us to group together two anonymous function one is a predicate and one is in a map what is the map is basically takes right map is takes another function okay which takes uh, one particular type as an argument and then based on top of that it returns another value right so it takes a kind of a mapper kind of a function so and filter takes a predicate kind of a function whether the expression value returns true or false okay that what predicate does we can also you know define this function separately like this predicate is even and then we can say value this this and we can also use this predicate as it is so we can put there and also pass this my functional predicate interface into here And that is also give me the same kind of a result that is also there. Okay. Now that's good enough for that we understood that what are lambdas are. It okay, does abstraction. Okay. And it also allows us a non mutable pipeline. What do you understand by the non mutable pipeline? This there is no state changes out here right what do you understand by the shared state or state mutating state that is there so in our previous example we have created a mutating state object outside our lambda loop right we have created a list of double so whenever the functions is working to or our loop is going to we basically updating that particular state that even state out here And always a mutating state is not a good practice because when you have like a multiple state working on your code, there will be multiple state is coming up and then they're going to be state changing the particular state. Out here the state is the even double. When that bit updated, it will be, you know, may not return me a consistent result all the time. Okay. So that's why there is no state changes. Everything is wrapped within the lambda itself. There is no any other variable or any other list I'm passing into this lambda. Okay. So that's uh, sorry, into the stream. So that's why the streams are basically non mutable pipeline of functions which are composed together. Okay. So we have seen filter, we have seen map. Okay. We have seen reduce, we have seen sum, we have seen collect. Okay. But before that, let's look into how can we, you know, parallelizing that particular lambda function. So normally what you find is that when you have a, like a collections, right? Collections has uh, the number I can, you know, call numbers. Then I can say it's like a parallel stream or it's like a stream, correct? Okay. So when you put the parallel stream, uh, what it does? Okay, see. See, I wanted to have the same example as before. Now here I have like a compute function. Say this compute function is maybe calling out an external web service or accessing a database or any long running tasks or any, you know, the resource intensive, which is time consuming uh, operations, right? So what we did is to simulate time consuming operation, we just uh, sleep that particular thread when it comes out here for one second using time unit second sleep. And then we just simply double the number and returning it back. Now, if I execute, so out of my list, how many numbers are there? In my list about there are like 10 numbers are there, right? Out of the 10 numbers, I'm already filtering out the only the even number. So maximum five numbers will be there. So this particular code will take about 
five minutes to get completed. Fine. It will execute for five minutes, five seconds rather, because I have given a uh, each operation there is a delay of one second that I have added, right? Hello, hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, why we are uh, mapping these two integers? Like, why are yeah. you doing this? So basically, if, apart from map, right? Hmm. Correct. There are additional functions that you can use for uh, your usability, right? You have like a map to int. Okay. Map to multiple value, map to double, map to double, map to long. Correct. So basically, these are basically shortcuts which creates a kind of a in stream or a particular. What is the in stream? In stream is basically nothing but uh, a stream. Okay. Which is uh, holding that integer as one is with type. Right. So what is basically does is you can easily you know convert this into a stream when it's basically you require convert this into a number. Okay. Similarly, you wanted to map it to a double, you can use double, map it to a long, you can use a long that is there. Okay. So those are functions are available, which are actually no, sir. What is the difference between a stream of integer and in stream? That is what I'm asking. No, no. Stream of integers uh, is basically you have like a stream object, right? Okay. It every element of this integer stream object is an integer. Fine. What is stream? Stream is basically a collection of data. It's in number of data, right? So each of these are basically stream. Now in stream, when you're saying in stream, in stream is also actually a stream. Okay. Base stream is been there and base stream from where it is extended from. Okay. These are the default streams that are there in stream, long stream, double stream. Right. What basically they does is here they take two types, right? It's just nothing but is it base interface of your stream. So if I can go to the stream, stream itself is extending from the base stream, right? Similarly, your long in double is basically nothing but a shortcut. Instead of saying stream int or stream double, you can mention only double stream directly okay so they are also been you know so let's see they are also been you know extending from the base team so these are basically two subclasses instead of mentioning the type out here explicitly like stream integer the parameter is type is integer when you say in stream it indicate that its base type is individual element type is actually integer. They are basically equivalent to each other because their base classes are same is that is base tree. Okay. Does that answer the question or do you have any other doubt? Means bo both are same almost. Yeah, so both are same we can say. So say if I say numbers, if I say stream, what is this? Uh, this is like a stream, right? Stream of a certain type, integer. Correct. But if I say in stream, in stream or can I assign stream to that? It will say no, you cannot. Then you have to you know convert them. I need to convert them map to int, right? Value or what you can do, integer dot 
in value. Okay. So basically, stream is uh, it contain integer stream, right? And similarly, on the in stream, can on the in stream, can I call the other methods? Data I can able to call on the streams. Yes, I can. So basically, I can call that. So only difference is if I need to convert the stream uh, to in stream or to in double or anything, I just call the map dot in function and then you know convert the integer to the integer value, right? So the value printed will be the same for both. Yeah, value printed will be the same for both. Because these are both are actually stream because both are extending from the base stream class. Yes. Okay. This is like a generic stream class, which is like a type parameter. It can have an integer stream, it can also person stream, employee stream, etc. But in stream is basically integer stream, integer only stream. But only thing is if you, you cannot directly assign stream to the in stream, you need to convert into map to yes. in stream. Okay. Similarly, if I say I wanted to have a like a double stream, right? That is also there. So I can put stream dot map to double. And here I can put integer dot double value. Right? Similarly, what we have is the long stream. Another string that we have. Similarly, if I wanted to use that. Then I have to put map to long. And then from that particular value, I have to convert into the long value that is there. Steam is basically generic type. So when you say map to int, what is the map to int is actually doing? Is basically taking that, uh, it's taking in to int function, right? What is a to int function doing? Is basically taking any kind of value and converting into an integer. Similarly, you have two into function that you there, and here you have two double function and two long function. So whatever you know stream of object you have, right? The stream is any stream of object. Okay. Now, if you need to convert into in stream, double stream, or long stream, then you can, you know, need to convert into into that. So, if I say if I don't want it to, you know, write say map to int, right? Alternatively, what I can write, I can write map stream example computer. I can also write, but this is like a stream of integer, and this is just the in stream. There is only one difference out of that; both are in a same class. But here, the values are exclusively out here in this stream can be of integer, but in stream class, you can have any kind of value. So these are more specific classes extended from base stream class. And this class is only your generic class. Okay. That is the only difference. And if you want to convert into one of that stream type to this, you just need to call, call the corresponding map function to that. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, okay. So let's execute this function. obviously when you're going to be executing this function this function will not return the result as it is it will take some time because we have given certain value uh, there and if we you know increase the number of value that we can see out of the number it will take more time out there right now in stream uh, sorry if we just put simple stream any kind of collection, we can uh, initialize the particular collection as a stream or parallel stream. So if we just put stream, that means it will work sequentially. Okay. 
it will not open up multiple thread depending on the multiple code that you have in your system and uh, if i wanted to see what is the time is actually being taken by this operation what it did is we put a time function right where we are taking um, the nanosecond time out here we are taking a runnable as in one of the input function uh, interface we are blocking that or finally we are taking what is the last time we are getting here and from that we are finding out what is the time it has taken in terms of seconds that is there so here we are using stream let me just you know go back to the example that we have Here we have the parallel stream. We will see the both example and we we'll see what is the time it's actually taking to completing the execution. So it is waiting, right? When the number string is there, it is waiting. There are like five even numbers and then it's multiplying by two. So it's taking five seconds to getting done, right? Now, if I do like a parallel stream, instead of saying stream, I can say it's a parallel stream. Okay. And then again, I, you know, execute this. It will be much more faster because now it's going to be using multiple thread to do the operation. So it just taken one second. Okay. Why is that? Because when you say parallel stream, the everything remains the same, no type getting changed. Only the data of the stream is now processed with multiple stream, depending on the number of code you have in your system, and it executes faster. Okay. So we have seen that it is previously it was sequentially going in for each operation, it's taking five seconds. Now, when it's not in a parallel stream, it's also taking much more faster because it's no, multi-threaded and each of the numbers are working in a separate threads. Correct? So that's how it is moving much more faster. Now, only one thing we need to remember when you are doing like parallel streams is that uh, one thing is it is done in a lower amount of time, unit of time, five to one seconds, but it will be consuming more memory because it's now be working with the four cpus right so the trade-off between the normal streams and the parallel stream is parallel stream will take more memory uh, more uh, execution threads it will start and more cpu time it will take cpu cores it will execute right the percentage of cpu will be increased, but the time will decrease. In case of normal stream, it is sequential, so it basically going to be using single single thread. It will take less memory because there is only one thread in which the code is going to be executed, but the time unit will be more. So we need to be cautious when you're using the parallel stream. We should not be using uh, whenever we can, because here the our resource consumption both for memory and cpu will be high and our time will be low so we have to be judicious when we're going to be using the parallel stream or not okay any question on the parallel stream no sir okay. and also on the reducer we need to be aware of this function like some max mean average count instead of you know doing some or instead of you're doing the max right what you can do you know you can actually use the shortcut reducer function or specialized reducer function to easily find out for many numbers what is the maximum number minimum number average number or what is the total number of count so that's uh, about lambda okay anybody can tell me what is the flat map does Have you guys used the example of flat map? Mm 
No, sir. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can have an example quickly. Okay. So basically, I'm just doing it. So here we just wanted to have a list of office location and the employees names that are there. first question is how can you know iterate over this so say i'm using the entry set right i'm using the streams right? now if i have the streams i'm going to be you know map this right so here is my entry and from the entry what i'm going to get a value that is the list of values So here I'm getting the list of employee names, right? I'm using collection dot streams, right? Now, if I wanted to do a flat map, map and if I can, I What is flat map does? Right. So here I can have the store. I see the both of the example outcome. Okay. So this is my example. 
first when I'm using the flat wall. If I not use the flat map and if I only use the map, what's going to happen out here? I see them. So when I'm collecting this, this become coming a list of list of strings. So this is how it is coming. It is not coming as a single list, right? When you're simply using the map, correct? And then, so what is we are doing? So when, how can we iterate a map? So basically from the map, we have three kind of sets are there. One is a key set, that is a collection of key, Mumbai and Kolkata. One is the value set, right? That is only the list of values. Another is your entity set. So I can choose the entity set and also I could have used the value set because here we are not using anything. So I can also use like values. And then here we have values. If I choose the value, what is that? Uh, you know, if I just simply use the values, I can, you know, collect it to a list, right? Then I'm going to get the similar kind of outcome that you are currently seeing right okay but instead of that i want to don't want to have a list of list of values right i wanted to have only a single list where i can have the both location employees name combined together correct so how can i do that Just... so instead of using you know map right what i'm going to use i'm going to use a flat map so when I'm using flat map, what is the flat map does? Is take another function. Okay. Is take one kind of a stream. And it basically does one, two kind of, a, uh, you know, many kind of list of streams of streams or value they have, they are basically flattened these things out. So when I'm just simply putting the values right out here, okay, what is happening? The individual list, our what is our data type is? This is our list of strings, right? So list of strings is coming one after another, correct? But I want this to be flattened out. What I can do, I can call the flat map, and from this particular value, right, I get, in, this is like a list, right? So on this, I can also call the stream. So now what is happening is for each of the, you know, two entries I have, I have the now called the stream. So this flat map is actually collecting the streams of the all the values and combining them together into a single stream of string that I can collecting into a list. Okay. That's what is basically flat map does. It's basically take each entry that is coming inside that and from the element of that particular entity it can maybe accessing any properties so it's map so obviously it's confirmed one type to the another type but end of day what is basically output is basically one single consistent stream of values okay so here this is one example another example i'm getting a stream of stream of streams right so then i can you know flatten those things out using flat map so instead of having like a stream within a stream i can have like a single stream of values so this is the purpose of flat map which is basically combine a particular type 
and combine multiple stream together into a single stream of values. That does answer your question. What is the flat map does? Is basically flatten the collection of collection or stream of stream into a single stream of a particular type. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. So you guys can do it. So it is. Do remember, it is used for list of list, which is your type that you are mapping to, or it can be stream of stream. Either way. Now, other few points are other few functions are there, right? Um, one is a group by, okay, and that basically we can quickly see group by example. Okay, so here we have like a person class, right? It has his name, it has his age, and it has his gender, right? This is my simple pojo, this has key property. And based on that, it has a basically a constructor accepting all the fields as a constructor argument. And then we have a getter setter out here. Here, gender is a uh, enum, which is just a male and female. And then uh, what we are doing is we are doing that group by function we are just checking. So, first time being, you know, creating. Um, persons okay there are put uh, four five six person some of them are sharing their name some of sharing the same kind of age okay most of the all are male now so i created this person that is a list of person that you are getting out here now from that i can you know just like i have seen the collectors class is there which is converting to list which can also convert to set right set and list we know the difference say it doesn't have a duplicate value similarly if i wanted to convert into a map how can i do that so i can call collector to map right so in the two map in map we know there is a, like a key and there is like a value correct so i can put map what is this this is a string and the next e type is a person person map i can put that And I can, you know, simply print this up. Now, the key of the particular person is the name and their age, right? So it is coming uh, person name and age and the corresponding person object that is there. We don't have a two string uh, there, so we don't able to see this. Okay. Now, that's one thing. Okay. Now, if I wanted to perform group by operation, right? Similarly, we have in SQL, we have like a group by operation that is there. Yes. Any questions? Hello. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. But, but, Okay, now if I wanted to do group by, so what are you doing out here? We're going to be grouping the person by their names. Okay. Fair enough. So what is grouping by is returning or what is the collection is actually returning into us. First, what is grouping by takes? It basically takes, it converts into a map right that's fine so what is basically does first it we are saying that we what is the key of our map will be it will be by name okay fine so what we wanted to do out here right we wanted to do out here say we want to find the who are the persons okay who have the similar names so if you wanted to do this Right. So in that case, what is going to happen? 
and put a map and put a string and put a list of person same name okay. if i want to do that i can put say persons dot stream then i can say collect okay. and here i'm going to be grouping them by their names right grouping by so what is the grouping by first going to be taking out? It's going to take out uh, person hit name. Okay. And the next, what it takes, then it also takes a list of person as it is. Okay. So here can we use list of person it's basically taking okay so let's say if i just simply put person okay. as it works let's take us the persons need to be collected in a list okay and use collectors list that converts into a person. So if I now paint this out, system dot out dot print LN, and I say same name person. Okay. Let's also do one more thing. Uh, let us put a two string function override out here, so we can see what is the person values that are coming out. So setting this two string, okay. and then I can go back to the code. So this group by I'm not understanding. So group by is basically first you have understood what is a group by does. What is map does? We have understood that. Yes. Yes. Sir. So collectors to map, right? So collector to map. What is doing is basically say that if you want to convert into a map, you require a key and you require a value. Correct. Right. Fine. So now that is okay. That is being printed out, right? Let me comment everything out first. I'm commenting everything. So if I now execute this, I've chosen the age, name and age as a key, right? And we're seeing that what is the person that is there against the key, what's the value that is there? Now, if I choose the name, some of the people has the same name, correct? So how can I represent that particular map? Is that map of uh, string and the list of person, correct? So if the person's name, because the key cannot be repeated, right? In a map, keys are basically set, right? So if I have a two-person name, Ashish, or two-person name, Abdullah, so what's going to happen? Then I have to uh, make the value as a list of persons, correct? Do you agree on that? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. OK, fine. So in that case, when I'm going to do the map, right? How can I do this mapping? I need to group them by their uh, first name, correct? OK. So grouping by will generate a map, right? Correct? But only thing is, previously, we are selecting a particular key, right? Now the keys are now duplicated, right? Yes. Correct? So there, I'm going to be need to group them there by their first name, correct? OK. So what I can do, I can put collectors grouping by person dot get name, then the list of persons. Because if there is like multiple persons sharing their first name, so our values will be list of persons. Correct? Fair enough. So now if I execute this. Okay. 
So when you have the Ashish, right? There are two person named Ashish, which are different ages. Similarly for Mihi, there is only one. Then Abdullah, there is like a two classes. Sam, there is one. So thereby we are grouped by their name. That is a so, PG and then the collection. So sir, this pins uh, means a uh, list of say, means a list of sets. List list, it's basically a list, right? You can see collected the two list. Yes. You have used list here, right? So that's where you're getting the list of persons up here. Okay. So this grouping by we have understood. Whenever we need to create a map and we need to choose a particular key type or a value, right? I can group them by and then when I'm grouping them, I can, you know, having them another set of collections, right? Similarly, if I wanted to change this to get by age, right? I can say the similar person age will be coming up. So in that case, it will be like an integer, right? Because the age is the integer. Then the persons are actually grouped by their agent. So similar person with a similar age will group together. Okay. Now, when the same age person like Ashish and Abdullah are sharing the same age, which is like 36. Similarly, for 46, Mihir is only one. Mihir and Ashish, also another Ashish is sharing the same age. So based on my keys, I can you know group them by. So I can group them by age, by key, gender, etc. Okay. So this is clear, right? Now, um, when I'm doing the grouping by right, okay, grouping by I have like a, another overridden version of it. One grouping by is just taking another collection that is a list. Okay. Now, instead of say, I don't want to get a list, right? I wanted to further group them by, by their ages and by their collection list, right? So maybe some persons are sharing same name. Sir, when, are, when we are getting this curly braces, this is a set, no? Which set? Which means, part here is means in output which you are getting is a means a list of sets. No, is this is map. Can you don't see it's a map? What I'm getting is a map, it's a key as a value. Okay, okay. Oh, that's a key. Okay, uh, see, now I'm getting this it. is a key, and this is a map value. Map value is a list. Correct now. Here, what we are getting all the time is that we are getting a list of persons all the time, right? Correct. In the group by, so in group by, what is saying that you get a collector. Now, here we can get a list, we can get a map, we can get even a uh, another set. Okay, but we get the second argument as a collector. Now, collectors also having like another function named mapping. Okay, then you can you know further you know convert this into so what is this is returning? What is this is returning currently? So let's see. So first of all, it's name map of string. Okay, then the second argument grouping by is here is returning another classifier right sorry if i can interrupt one. Sure. uh yeah actually we have already exceeded by 15 minutes so if i can know like when would be uh, we can wrap it up in next five minutes okay in five minutes right, right. yeah okay and uh sorry i have another call so i am dropping off what you can do is when you are done, just stop the recording and okay. then everyone can exit. Also for everyone, I've shared the feedback forms link on the chat itself. Kindly fill that. Thank you.
Now here, what it does, does it right? Now instead of getting that particular uh, list of persons, I'm collecting there now the age, their age. So difference from the first group by function and this group by function is that, okay? Previously I was having their uh, name also. Let me convert this to name and this to stream. So here I'm, you know, collecting their, um, collecting their name and collecting the individual objects. Instead of, you know, collecting the individual objects, the list of persons, what I can collect now, I can collect a particular field out of that object. So here I'm chosen to collecting their age, correct? So you're only going to see out here the person names and what is their ages are, okay? So we are seeing that there are two Ashis and they have sharing the age 46 and 36. Similarly, there are two Abdullahs who have sharing an age of 20, 50 and 26. Okay. So here what you are finding, persons with same name having different ages, right? And here what we are doing is, we are getting persons list who shares the same first meaning. Right. So here, obviously, you are getting a person's list in a map, right? So all of this, when you say uh, grouping by or map, what you're doing is we are outcome or outcome becomes a map. Persons map with e name and age and value being the person itself, right? So if I need to convert into a map, so just I'm going to reiterate the uh, examples. If I want to convert into a map, I have to use collectors to map, right? And there I have to mention. The key and the value. Whatever I want to map, that becomes the type of my map. That's the first thing, simple. Next, if I wanted to group them together, I want to group the persons okay, who have the same name. I'll share the same name. So in that case, I'm going to use the group by function. What the field I'm going to group by? by their first name, okay? What I'm going to grouping, in the grouping I'm getting, the list of persons, okay? Now, here are going to be person group, okay? person groups, uh, person grouping, with the same first name, but having different ages. So here, instead of, you know, grouping the person, right? Team name and show their age. So their age. So I wanted to know here. Okay, how many ashes are there? There's this ashes, and what are the ages are? So, so for ashes, one person age is forty six, another is thirty six. Similarly, there are two Abdullahs are there. One is fifty, and another is twenty six. Okay. So in that case, in a grouping, why I have to use the overridden version of it. I have to use a person first name as a key. In the collection mapping, I'm going to take their age and the collection to list. So it will become a list, but instead of this being a person, I choose their age to be displayed out here. Okay. So that's more or less any other question you guys have. So far from the whatever you see from the lambda and so that uh, means a dot to map function means what is the utility of this? Yeah, means so basically what is the collector does? We know the collection 
is the one of the terminal operator right apart from correct what are the terminal operator i can use i can use collect i can use find any i can use any match i can use uh, then find first right find any find first right then any match all match okay these are basically terminary operators so unless and to call the terminary function your stream not going to get executed we know the streams are basically lazy execution right they are basically not data they are not data they are basically pipeline for processing the data that is it correct right? so when you say collect so you wanted to convert this now the collect is basically takes a collector what is a collector takes inside that or what is a collector you know classes are there you can quickly check collector can convert into a list so if you want to have like a list of values you can convert into a list you can convert into a map okay. you can do the average double in wrong okay you can also do the count you can also do here also you are doing filtration uh, flat mapping group by group by concurrently using multiple state you can join two collector etc max mean partition by etc reducing etc that you can do so basically normally we use a collector to map convert the our stream into another map format right or we call to list to get the collection out in a list form similarly to set to convert it to a set form that's what the collector does it collects the value at the end and convert into other stream a list map or our set because prior to this what we have is basically nothing but a stream of values but that particular stream of values we need to convert into a particular collection does the clear so what the collector does it's one of the terminal operator which is basically here you have the multiple different op other options like one is a group by a group by there is like average count uh, average you can also do you can do group, uh, other concurrent functions are also there you can collect is basically collects the value out of the stream in a specific form either map list or stream set okay. does that answer the questions Yes, sir. So, sir, for like more uh, like complex operation, we will use map, and for like less com complex operation, we will use list. Because in a list, in a map, we will uh, means uh, use uh, this in a key value pair format. So, for that that uh, key value pair, we can use a, a string, and then we can use a list uh, for the values. No. So basically these are three different kind of you know your main collection types right whenever yes. you have to use a scenario call you have to use a key and value pair right kind of a dictionary then you can use go for map list is a simple list of values collection of values and your set is basically non-duplicate collection of values that's all yes So at least we can say we are clear with the streams, what is the lambda function, etc. Right. Any question, Nida Chandima? No, sir. Okay, fine. No, sir. So please do um practice more a little bit of streams and others. Okay. Yes, sir. Let us close the recording for me.